automatically, a periodic report opens at the end of each reporting period. The periodic report consists of two parts, a technical and a financial part. Within the latter, a beneficiary must fill out its financial statement and explain selected cost categories. There are two project roles which are necessary for the submission of the financial report, the so-called participant contact and the project financial signatory. Firstly, the participant contact completes the financial statement within the periodic reports pop-up window. For this purpose, we use the final overall amounts for the respective cost categories in euros. Secondly, we need to add details to the personal cost category. By clicking the icon on the right, we can specify the numbers of person months which were employed and link them to their corresponding work packages. Below, there is also a section for in-kind contributions. We only fill out this part if the beneficiary used any in-kind contributions within the reporting period. Next, the other direct cost category should be also detailed in case its sum exceeds 15% of personal costs. In fact, the system notifies its user automatically and it also calculates the minimum amount which needs to be further explained. Again, by clicking the icon on the right, we may add items into the subcategories of travel, equipment or other direct goods and services. Ideally, we begin with the most expensive items. Similarly to the personal costs, we must always specify the corresponding work package and answer whether the expense was foreseen. If it wasn't, we need to explain it. The level of detail in our explanation may also depend on the requirements of the project officer. Nonetheless, the system allows us to submit the financial statement when at least the minimum amount identified by the system is explained. After clicking Save and Validate, we may print the use of resources, that is, the person months and the items of the other direct costs, or we may save them for the purposes of our project financial signatory. In case we have used a subcontract within the reporting period, it needs to be included in the financial statement as well. If the subcontract was not foreseen in Annex 1, we need to provide an explanation. However, this should be always communicated with the project officer as soon as possible. The officer may still approve the unforeseen subcontract through the so-called simplified approval procedure. Usually though, a formal amendment of the grant agreement might be necessary. In the event that we need to claim less cost than we actually incurred, it is possible. Finally, after clicking Save and Validate, the financial statement can be locked by clicking the button Lock for Review. This delegates the statement to the project financial signatory for checking. He may also return it to the participant contact, who then makes any necessary changes and resends it back by locking for review again. Once the project financial signatory decides that the statement is correct and complete, he sends the entire financial report to the project coordinator by an electronic confirmation of his password. Afterwards, the coordinator sees all of his project partner's financial reports. By clicking Redo, he can return them to their respective beneficiaries or he may accept them by clicking Include. Having collected financial reports from his partners, he sends them as part of the periodic report to the European Commission with a request for payment. Additionally, depending on the coordinator, Part B of the technical report should also include explanations of any possible budget transfers, deviations of the planned person months, or the usage of unforeseen subcontracts or in-kind contributions. In case we notice any mistakes in our previous financial statements, we may correct them by applying the so-called adjustment, where the negative or positive deviations from the originally claimed amounts are to be specified. The beneficiary also needs to send the financial statement of its linked third parties. After that, 
the linked third party signs a hard copy of the report and the beneficiary archives it for any future audits. At the end of the project, with the final report, receipts of the project should be declared. If the beneficiary needs to obtain the certificate on the financial statement, it has to be included in the final report as well.